only purpose of man's sojourn on this earth is to seek God. Before you die, before you finish with your physical body and all your nuts and bolts have become rusted, you should have dissolved your mind. Before your body becomes rusted and invalid and not useful and the nuts and bolts start creaking in your joints and you become a rusted entity due to constant usage, you know the body is being used. So like a vehicle or auto it tires and it gets wear and tear. So before the wear and tear of your body you should have dissolved your mind. That is the race against time and the race in phenomena is that the mind should have totally dissolved before you die. That is the perfect harmony. If you have a, me a messy mind, it's no use. Because the main thing which leads to all these problems, all these uh, complex situations in your life is the doing of the dual mind. The mind is dual always because it's in duality. And there is a process of purifying the mind by the breath. Like you say, the breath purifies the mind. like the gentle abrasion of the breath on an erratic mind rounds it off, smoothens it, flattens it, thins it, makes it subtler, transforms it till the mind gradually by constant rhythmic breathing the mind dissolves. Long years of practice are required. You don't have to believe in God. You are God. You don't have to believe in God. You are God. And by the gentle abrasion of the mind, of the breath on the mind, when the mind dissolves, God appears. Like there's a saying which I've taken from the ancient saints is that you rub the tinder and the fire appears. You press the seed and the oil appears. And you breathe the man and God appears. So it's, it has to be so simple. And the simpler you keep your mind and keep breathing, you don't have to believe in God. You are God. But if you keep breathing rhythmically, that gentle abrasion of the breath will gradually dissolve your mind before your body can die. You should be out of your body. You should make your release in this life. It's not impossible. But it is so it is so simple. You only require the discipline of daily practice. It's very simple. Breathe with awareness. Breathe with awareness. And that is the alchemy of total transformation. Breathing with awareness can transform the most negative mind by gradual process as the gentle waves of the river lap upon the shores. If you see in the Narbada river, in the Narbada river they say, Narbada ka har kamkar ek shankar hai. Because the, the river is constantly flowing and the stones become round. They become well rounded. So by constant breathing, First, your personality will become well-rounded. All your psychological kinks will disappear. And then as, even if it's rounded like a shivering, if you keep breathing, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Your mind becomes smaller and thinner and thinner and thinner till the mind disappears. And when the mind disappears, you appear. You and the mind cannot stay together. But now you think you're, you are not, you are the mind and not the, the spirit.
So, you put the hands of your mind upon the eyes of your soul and cry that you cannot see. You put the hands of your mind upon the eyes of your soul and cry that you cannot see. Take the hands of your mind away from the eyes of the soul and behold yourself to be divine. And what is the taking of the hands of the mind away from the soul? Constant practice of Kriya Yoga. How many of you have practiced Kriya Yoga here? Raise your hands. Who has not got Kriya Yoga? Who has not got Kriya Yoga? Everybody has. Good. So, firstly, there are three things basically which the mind is composed of. Vritti, which are the immediate random thoughts, the whirlpools, the twistings and turnings of the mind, which can be dissolved in the conscious level, in a state of concentration, right? Vritti, which are random thoughts. Then there are deeper set thoughts, <coughs> which may have taken form, which are known as pratyay, which are thought forms. These thought forms are in the deeper mind, in the deeper subconscious mind, but they are not remembered, they are remembered experiences of this life. And then there are some scars, which are remembered experiences of past life. So in meditation, you can dissolve by pranayama and meditation, the first stage of the mind's turbulence, which is vritti. Okay? But Patanjali vritti has said the vritti is the transformation of the modifications of the mind. So vritti is the first level of random thoughts which you can tackle with the breath and pranayama in your state of meditation. But then there is a deeper state which is called not just thoughts, but thoughts have forms. So the thought has created a form and this is called Pratyaya. This has to be resolved in a state of deep meditation and first stages of Samadhi. In the stage of Sabhikalp Samadhi, where you get fleeting experiences of Nirvikalp, but you, if that is in a state, a thought-free state of awareness, will help you to separate the consciousness from the mind. So that's a meditation, then first state of Savitra Samadhi, Pratyaya is dissolved. But the samskars, which are remembered experiences of past lives, are not even dissolved in Savitra Samadhi. You have to go to the superconscious state of meditation, of uh, uh, the, the superconscious ecstasy, the ecstasy of expanded consciousness, the superconscious. That is Nirvikal Samadhi. So when you keep practicing Nirvikal Samadhi, then the remembered experiences of past life gradually dissolve and go away. And when your mind is in a state of contentless consciousness, when it is a thought-free state of awareness and there are no other thoughts, not even a single thought there in your mental sky and in your conscious sky, then you are said to be in a state of seedless Samadhi, surge Samadhi or the thought-free state of awareness. So first, at the first stage, your thoughts, random thoughts are dissolved in a state of breathing and meditation, Kriya Yoga. Then your thought forms, which are deeper, they are thought images, visuals with thoughts, are dissolved in states of Samadhi, like the thought-free state, nir Nirvichar Samadhi, Sabikalp Samadhi. And your sanskars, which are remembered experiences of past lives, are dissolved in a state of nirvikalp samadhi, which we call asampratnyat samadhi. But nirvikalp samadhi, it goes, this asampratnyat or nirvikalp, it goes to a state of nirvikalp, then the sanskars pull it back to sabikalp, then it goes to nirvikalp, then to sabikalp. And when it all the samskars are dissolved, remembered experience of this in past life. Then your consciousness goes to Nirvikalp and doesn't come back again to Samikalp Samadhi. That is a stage known as the seedless Samadhi, which is Asampratnyato Nirbij Samadhi. In yogic plants, it is called Nirbij, the seedless Samadhi. And then you have to wait and not do anything. Because you are in a state, you have broken the 
the, the, the speed of the electron, you have broken all matter. The last phase of matter is the electron. You pass from Savikal into Nirvikal Samadhi, which is known as the Nirbij Samadhi, the seedless Samadhi. And you remain in that state of seedless Samadhi. But that is, that is done by what, when I work with you, when I give you a thing called Shiva path, that is working on your Purva Sanskars, your own Vritti or thoughts you can dissolve and evolve. Your own thought forms which are Pratyay, you can evolve by Kriya Yoga. But your Sanskars, you need the grace of the Guru to help you to get into a state of Shiva path. Shiva path is a state of thought free awareness. A state of thought-free enlightenment, which the Guru projects this thought-free state of enlightenment into your mind and is in empathy with you and makes you experience that thought-free state and dissolve your samskar, your remembered experience of past life, by separating your consciousness from your mind. Once your consciousness is separated from your mind, then the mind is starved by slow degrees. It has nothing to feed on. When your mind has no thoughts to feed on, it slows and dies a slow death. The moment the Guru helps your mind to die, you are free to fly. The way of the white swan. So now you have to tune in to me. Remember, I never preach or give lectures. This is an excuse because via my vibrations, I am transmitting. And if you are, if you are, it, uh, you get healed to the degree that you are aware. From a little pain in your toenail to cancer, all can be healed. Depending upon your degree of empathy with me, your synergy, your degree of rapport. So the more in tune you are with me, the sky is the limit. Because I have no mind, I am only consciousness. But the mind is an excuse for me to incarnate into duality and give you these things. So people always miss the thing. Preaching and all is, I may, even if I say Indra, Bundra, 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 I will stick in you because the vibration will hit you. Or if I say Om Namah Shivaya, Shiva Soha, Om Sai, there's still the vibration will hit you. So words are a facility, they are irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. I don't preach, I'm not a te preacher, I don't teach, I'm not a teacher. I come here. To catch you, to shake you and wake you up. Teachers, teachers inform, masters transform. Masters never teach. If they teach, it's just as an excuse. To, you know, make your superfluous hoity-toity mind, though we are very intellectual, there is nothing got to do. The naked truth has nothing to do with all this talk. These are the mere all talks and philosophies are the mere babblings of a child, says Shiv Gorak Shababaji. Till your pran flows in your central channel, till your kundalini is awakened, all philosophies and talks are the mere babblings of a child. That's why we don't give all this talk and all these philosophies any importance. I've got cancer, I've got this thing, you should do this, you should take two amens, you should do this, that's all talk. Can you, can you transmit or can you blow your breath into my being, into my soul and cure my cancer? That is the question. If you can do it, then you are the being. Follow such a man. Otherwise, don't waste your time in this world. Sit alone and place it sincerely to your soul. The answer lies within. I am just a projection of you within. I am here because you have called me for. I am just a figure. I have been molded from your soul essence. I am the mold of your spirit. Just like people get the government they deserve, people get the guru they deserve. So you guys must have done quite a bit of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a guy, bad man like you must have done a lot of bad karma. Because you don't have the best guru. Because you know, he, he cannot get his words across to you. He can only get his experience and wherever I talk, whether it's my videos or lectures, always bear in mind that if you, if you don't listen to my lecture and just sit in front of my, my sound which is talking, you will be healed. Try it. Go to the YouTube, try it. 
So we are movers and shakers. We catch you, shake you, and wake you up. Okay. Talk is just a facility. It's just a means to an end. Because you are so used to talking and engaging at the mental level. If I suddenly come and take your samadhi, you'd say oh, it's very. He's very rude. He didn't give any, any epilogue, epilogue or any introduction or any any this thing, and he just came and took us to the state. But if you see what I'm talking is a transmission even now. Children can feel it. So we can meditate a little if you're in harm, if you're in harmony with me, if you're in sync with me, you'll get to a thought-free state. take you on a little flight. I'll be transmitting. I'm already there. If, you see, the difference you will create, the shortcoming or whatever for the total reception will be if your mind disturbs you. From my side, I have no mind, so I'll give you the full transmission. So sit quiet. Close your eyes. Your body is the temple. You are the white swan in the third eye. What is the temple? You are the soul swan. Raise your soul swan to the top of your head. Clap your wings. You are the purple star, which is the shape of the swan. The top point is the head, the side point of the stars are the wings, and the two legs at the bottom. Follow the way of the purple star of the east and let the star flap its purple wings and fly higher and higher. Leave your body temple behind and fly higher and higher and higher. Merge into the moon. Drink the embrace of the moon. Be surfeited with it. Saturate every molecule of your being. You are filled with the nectar of life and love. Penetrate the orb of the moon and fly higher and higher. You are the Hamsa swan. Fly into the deep starry skies. Higher and higher. And Hamsa studded with the stars. The jewel wings ablaze and bound. Boundless land of ever wondrous peace and joy. And as you fly higher and higher, you taste of the free spirit of the Lord. Your wings are spread from eternity to eternity, you're going to the boundless land. And as your wings take a golden hue of burnished gold, you enter the central spiritual sun. They drink of the wisdom and the knowledge of the world. Penetrate the orb of the sun and fly higher and higher. You are the vast and wide and big swan of eternity. You are so vast that you lose your form. You fly higher and higher. And you merge into Satchidanand. Absolute. Be in tune with me and experience the thought free state of enlightenment. Mahadhyanana sthanana nadana binda Mahadhyanana sthanana nadana binda Akasha nahi maha kaal kaha Sab shunya ashunya ka hai pan hai Ishwar hi nirankar maha The 
the spirit of absolute nothingness is the glory of the Lord. Immersed in it, you are totally rejuvenated and free. This is the Shiva path, the way of the white swan, Shiva path, what free state of enlightened awareness. You are sharing my samadhi now. Be in tune. Just be. Nothingness. Thank you. 